Hello and welcome. In this week's episode, India attempts world record by planting nearly 50 million trees in 24 hours. Global biodiversity drops below sustainable safe zone. And WWF Australia seeks aid in purchasing an N4 fishing license. More than 800,000 volunteers assembled in northern India to plant 49.3 million tree saplings in 24 hours. The record-breaking event, held on Monday the 11th, took place in the state of Uttar Pradesh, one of India's most populous regions. The trees, comprising some 80 different species, came from 950 different nurseries around the state. Uttar Pradesh's Chief Minister Akhilesh Yadav addressed the volunteers saying the world has realized that serious efforts are needed to reduce carbon emissions to mitigate the effects of global climate change. Uttar Pradesh is making a beginning in this regard. The world record is held by Pakistan where nearly 850 trees were planted in a similar attempt in 2013. The Guinness Book of World Records Committee could take up to two months to verify whether the Uttar Pradesh project has broken Pakistan's record, but preliminary reports by supervisors are optimistic. India pledged to increase forest cover to 95 million hectares by 2030 at the UN Paris Climate Change Conference last year. The government has designated more than $6.2 billion to fulfill this pledge. India is renowned for its high pollution rates, with six of its cities holding positions in the top 10 most polluted cities in the world, according to the World Health Organization, potentially leaving millions of people in India at serious risk of cardiac and respiratory diseases. Authorities hope that foresting large areas of land will, in conjunction with other practices, reduce overall pollution and improve the quality of the environment. WWF Australia is appealing for donations to cover the cost of purchasing a $100,000 N4 net fishing license. Owners of an N4 license are permitted to drag a 1.2 km wide net along the Great Barrier Reef off the coast of Australia. By purchasing a license, the WWF hope to retire the license and therefore prevent the nets from being used. There are five N4 licenses available and the WWF has already purchased one but seeks to purchase more to ensure that there are no such nets deployed in the area. The widespread capture of sharks will lead to large-scale ecological damage as they are apex predators, a crucial link in any marine ecosystem. WWF Australia Conservation Director Jelly Llewellyn says of the project, This is an opportunity for people to help stop a massive 1.2 km long net from sitting in the reef waters and indiscriminately killing almost everything that swims into it. The enormous nets kill tens of thousands of juvenile sharks each year, including hammerheads, which are listed internationally as endangered. Hammerhead numbers have crashed in Queensland, possibly by 80%. The Great Barrier Reef was declared a World Heritage Site in 1971. It is home to over 130 species of sharks and rays and is one of the richest and most delicate ecosystems on Earth. You can donate to the WWF Australia by following the link in the description. An international team of scientists has issued a warning that biodiversity is dropping below safe levels for the support and well-being of human societies. The report, published in the journal Science on Thursday the 14th, states that 58% of the world's land coverage already falls below the safe levels of biodiversity. The team ascertained that an area that loses more than 10% of its total biodiversity is at risk of irreversible damage. Professor Andy Purvis, one of the report's authors from the Imperial College of London and the Natural History Museum, says, Once we're on the wrong side of the boundary, it doesn't mean everything goes wrong immediately, but there is a markedly higher risk that things will go badly wrong. A reduction in biodiversity renders an ecosystem less adaptable to environmental changes and therefore more likely to collapse. The resilience or fragility of an ecosystem also has a direct impact on human civilizations. If the natural functions of an ecosystem are irreversibly disrupted, the results may be devastating to the inhabitants of that particular area. By analyzing 2.38 million records for 39,100 species collected by hundreds of scientists at over 18,500 sites around the world, the scientists were able to estimate how biodiversity levels have changed across the globe since before humans altered the global ecosystem through industrialization and agriculture. The scientific study provides the most detailed analysis of global biodiversity to date, 
providing an accurate view of the current state of the Earth's decline in biodiversity. The sun-powered aircraft Solar Impulse 2 has finished its penultimate flight, landing in Egypt. It took off from Spain on Monday the 11th, taking just over 48 hours to make the trip. André Boschberg piloted the second leg of the journey, while Bertrand Picard is set to complete the challenge by taking the Solar Impulse 2 back to Abu Dhabi in the next few days, thus completing the around-the-world journey. To find out more on the Solar Impulse 2, click the link in the description. Thanks for watching this week's episode of Enviro Report. Subscribe to stay updated about future videos. In the meantime, please share your thoughts on these issues in the comments below.